The Subaru Ascent has got a light refresh for the front fascia in the crystal pearl white here at Subaru of Lakeland. And inside, we now get the 11.6 inch vertical touchscreen. No more 6.5 or 8 inch. Just take it away, clean up the dashboard, and that's what I like with this particular model. And Subaru starts the fascia off with the new grille, the badging that pushes out more with the chrome bar that integrates into the revised LED headlamps. It's adaptive LED headlamps. When you're thinking about Honda, Toyota, you're not getting that, you get it with Subaru. The lower LED fog lamps, you get that material that's more rock resistant, in large grille, all gloss black. 8.7 inches of clearance, that's standard. More than the new Honda Pilot, the Toyota Highlander. The front is gonna have a little similarity to the Ford Explorer. That's the only thing that I think that, I wish they would have changed it up a little bit. Maybe extended the hood out because they didn't extend the length. They just refreshed and resurfaced all the elements in the front to give it that dynamic set. 18 inch wheels is standard. This is the limited. So you know we're gonna get 20 inch machine finished alloy wheels. New dual function X mode with customizable traction control. Standard symmetrical all wheel drive. That's not going to be the case for Ford Honda or Toyota. Here in Mazda are the only ones that's going to offer that for a third row variant. Four wheel independent suspension. Towing is also another key point because this is standard all wheel drive, 5,000 pounds of towing. Yet again, Honda, Toyota, no. You're gonna have 3,500 pounds and then 5,000 pounds because they got front wheel and rear wheel drive. Chrome is going to surround the window treatment. Raised roof rails, it's the only SUV in class that has them to this extent to make it easy for tie downs. So you don't have to buy the crossbars, but obviously I would option it myself. Therefore, maybe you could put some canoes up there, whatever. You do have a pano moonroof. I don't know if you want to cover that, but hey, it still looks more sporty and it looks athletic because the lower skirt, it gets the chrome for the limited, but you get the matte black that's going to surround that in the fenders. This will be around three inches shorter than the Pilot at 196.8 inches. Boxer four cylinder, producing 260 horsepower is coming out of this. With 277 pound-feet of torque, it's going to be paired to the linear Tronic CVT transmission, which when you get into Honda, it's now the new 10-speed automatic transmission. They've discontinued the 9-speed, so it's on its second gen. When you go into Toyota, it's an 8-speed automatic transmission. Unless you go to the hybrid, then it's a CVT. 19 MPGs for the city, 25 MPGs for the highway. The rear is going to have all of that matte black on the lower, but you can hear it's scratch resistant. Front and rear parking sensors. We now have a 360 degree camera. That's an option. We have it here. C structure LED tail lamps in the badge setup with the Subaru in the center. The Chrome is going to integrate into the C structure tail lights. The setup does look a little bit more luxurious than athletic. I think the Honda Pilot refresh has a little bit more of a dynamic look to the rear. Power lift gate to go into 17.8 cubic feet. It does sit up a little bit higher because of that 8.7 inches of clearance. No LED interior lights. The Harman Kardon does come into the back. Underneath the floor, you have a storage compartment in which you can put that privacy cover and you can undo for your spare tire that's tucked underneath here. Split fold the rear bench in the back at a 60-40 split. Increasing cargo to 43.5 cubic feet. Split fold the captain seats to max the cargo at 75.6 cubic feet. It does take a few seconds, but it's pretty quick to close the tailgate. Let's go inside, start up so you can hear that exhaust now. Going inside the Ascent Limited, it's easy. Good ground clearance, whether you're short or tall. Headroom at 41.3 inches, legroom 42.2 inches. And what you're gonna find in the first and second row is you're gonna have more leg space than Honda, than Volkswagen, more head space than Ford.
12-way power seat adjustment for the driver with memory, heated front seats, four-way power seat adjustment for the passenger, cushion extensions only for the driver, it's manual, perforated with the contrast stitch in white. Inside the dashboard gets the long storage pocket on the passenger side, satin aluminum around all of your air vents. And I like this pattern that comes into play right up here on top of the dash. It wraps around just like all Subarus integrating into the door panel, more cleaned up and more storage pockets on the driver's side. Integrated 11.6 vertical touch screen with navigation has replaced the 6.5 and the 8 inch. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming Bluetooth audio with cabin connection, which is where you can talk to the occupants, as you can hear me, from the front. Very similar to Honda's cabin talk. I do like that feature because you don't have to yell. It's a longer vehicle, nearly 200 inches long. My Subaru Wi-Fi hotspot, 4G LTE capabilities. Put it into reverse. You have a 360 degree reverse camera. When you click onto the view button down here, you can change the layout to make it easy for your reversing Try climate control settings. It starts off as a dual climate control setting in the front with actual buttons and knobs for your volume and to change the tune. Underneath with the wireless charging pad, USB A and C port, the cup holders, maybe a 20 ounce will fit without any issues. The key fob for the ascent, satin aluminum in the gloss black. You don't have a lot of storage cubbies here. It's gonna be soft for your elbows and it has a little bit of a two Tier layout, open up inside. It's a deep storage pocket. Pick the tray up, put the tray back and have some change. Put your cards or your wallet, close it up, integrating into a three spoke steering wheel, multi function with paddle shifters. It's heated, adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, the stocks, your push button start. Unfortunately, they have not integrated a digital gauge cluster yet but you can still go through an array of information for the driver. The door panel starts off with the memory seats for the driver's side. Harder materials on the top, soft materials everywhere else. One touch up and down for just the front windows. Storage pocket is gonna be smaller with three beverage or bottle holders in the upgraded Harman Kardon sound system. And it wouldn't be an SUV without a large pano moon roof that goes to the second row. Just really hard to find a happy medium here. Trying to put it, there we go. Just gotta play with it a little bit. For the second row, I'm at 40 inches of headroom, 38.6 inches of legroom. These seats also recline back in which I would just throw this up because there's no point of it. It's like I'm battling it and it's just not gonna have a happy medium. You can also move these forward in which I can still fit here in the back seat. You'll have a substantial amount of room, but because of the size of this vehicle, I would say about this is the happy medium. The door panel in the back gets the same materials, harder pretty much right there, soft materials everywhere else, a cup or beverage holder in the front, and then three more to complement in the lower. Storage behind both of the front seats, your third climate control setting, and heated rear seats because this is the limited trim. USB A and C port, open this up, and you get some more cup holders inside here. You do have a bit of a platform here as you're noticing, you have maybe four inches upwards. So you sit up a little bit higher than the clearance of the front seats. To go into the third row, lift here, slide it forward, and you just climb right on in. For the third row, I'm at 36.2 inches of headroom. Let me move this back so you can actually see the leg room. It's very tight. 31.7 inches. The other thing is these rails is gonna be pretty much everywhere for your feet. So it's kind of hard to find a happy medium. Two cup or bottle holders on the side, hard materials pretty much everywhere. I do like the speaker setup. It's a large window for the back with your air vents on the roof. I like that we have this material behind the seats because it's more of a durable and easy to clean off. You have a USB port, a storage cubby right here that you could put a smaller phone, and three 
beverage or bottle holder. So ideally, you wanna sit on the passenger side for the third row. Sitting into the center, headroom is about the same. It's somewhat carved out, so it's not really a big difference there. Leg space, though, is a lot better because I can actually stretch out and enjoy the drive. 8.7 inches of ground clearance is standard. Symmetrical all-wheel drive, standard. There's just a lot of standard things that make this a little bit more exciting when I'm thinking about Honda and Toyota and it's not as long as the new Honda so I like that but you will lose obviously cargo because that goes over a hundred cubic feet of storage. 2.4 Boxer 4, 260 horsepower, 277 pound-feet, look at what you get. Now it's not going to be as athletic of a drive as the Mazda CX-9. That one is going to feel a little bit more sporty and faster. Only really I think because of how much weight this is and how high off the ground you are. Sound deadening, you do hear some road noise throughout. The Honda Pilot refresh will be the most quiet. Dynamics, you can get in and out of any lanes. The steering is pretty light. Braking, it grabs good. Anything that's around 196 inches is pretty long for the most part, and it's third row. So let's see for that turn radius. I'm thinking about two and a half lanes. We're at a complete stop. And that's pretty much what we're getting, and let's rock and roll. I also understand whenever you're getting a CVT transmission from experience of owning a CVT transmission doing reviews you do lose some speed because of the gear ratio in which it doesn't make it as I guess sporty in the drive if you change this to a nine speed even an eight speed I think it would really change the whole dynamics of the vehicle now that's going to take me to some things I like and dislike and starting off the bat 5,000 pounds of towing I know it's not the 6,000 that I would like it to be at this price point the second thing that I like is you get the larger screen I'm not a huge fan of the 11.6 inch screen and you can see some glitch which you probably saw on the interior specs I think a nine inch vertical would be sufficient efficient but it does fit well in the width of this vehicle because it's also the longest Subaru vehicle that they make so I like that they've discontinued the 6.5 and the 8 inch and now they've made it all cleaned up for the dash taking me to the last thing is the front fascia it looks more dynamic they just did a great job making the grille a little bit longer, not too over the top. It goes right into the headlamp assembly, flowing over to the hood. Three things that I dislike is if you're trying to drive this in stop and go traffic and do some maneuverabilities, the power is a little sluggish. Taking me to the second thing that I dislike, the third row seats are heavy. It would be nice if it was just a standard power third row to put down, because if you're not somebody that goes to the gym all the time and crunching it it really is a workout to put it down to get that maximum cargo capacity to the second row here we go it just takes a little bit for it to get motivated but once it gets up into the ratio or your rpm gets higher it's ready to take off the last thing that i dislike is in the third row the usb port is only behind the passenger side they don't give it to you on the driver's side for the third row you also lose a cup or beverage holder in which if i'm going to use that because i'm going to have to adjust the second row up a little bit because of my height i want to be able to have charging ports and more areas for storage. Comparing this to the new Honda Pilot, the interior of that has been refreshed to a point that it just makes everything more open. This one's gonna feel a little bit more closed just the way it's set up. Even though the dash is configured, I think correctly, you have a lot more storage actually on the dash of this than the Pilot because you get a little nook on the driver's side just in the center area here it's really busy in the sense of i don't have anything to put more than two cups and the storage cubby above the usb a and c port it's a little bit smaller for my liking only because again when you're looking at a refresh 
they did a better job in the sense of making it more roomy. The door panels here though, feel a little bit more so on the lower trim, but Honda gives you a second pocket. When you go into the Highlander, it's also going to be tight for the door panel and in the center, all of them will have storage in the dash. I like to thank Subaru of Lakeland for giving us this 2023 Subaru Ascent Limited for our car review. If you're already a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Hawkeye community. If not, I don't know what you're waiting for. Click the next video and the subscribe button. Oh my God, I'm just joking. I wanted to see if you guys are watching all the way to the end. There's nobody behind me. Click the subscribe button, check out the merchandise website and Instagram, leave a comment and a like.